Disclaimer. Don't be an idiot like me. Wear gloves when handling lab chemicals. You can only be lucky so many times before that luck runs out. Hey everyone. This video is going to be a practical demonstration of dissolving cellulose using the Schweitzer's reagent process. There are already many very good YouTubers capable of explaining the theoretical and analytical science part in far greater detail than I'm able to, and I highly recommend you watching them. Myself, personally, have always been best at practical and applied sciences, and I s tend to learn best through hands-on experience. Like they say, one experiment is worth 1,000 lectures. Wait, did I say that? Ah, well, it's true. My goal here is to try and remove some of the intimidation factor that seems to follow the branch of science that is chemistry. I want to show you that you don't really need fancy lab equipment or a PhD to have some fun with this fascinating subject. As I've said, this is a purely practical demonstration. No measuring, no calculating, just a nerd in a shed mixing pretty chemicals together. I hope you enjoy. Okay, first we need to mix up a copper sulfate solution. Now this is done by putting about um, that much copper sulfate pentahydrate crystals into a beaker containing exactly some distilled water. This is all done on top of a hot plate magnetic stir combo, and that's just for ease of stirring. After combining, the heat and stirring is turned to full, and the crystals are allowed to dissolve completely into solution. Now normally I would grind these copper sulfate crystals into a powder so they dissolve faster, but I thought it might look kind of cool in a time lapse to watch them dissolve. The exact amounts here aren't really important either because we're heating the solution, everything should dissolve, and that'll make our working solution a little more concentrated. Uh, the copper sulfate crystals in this particular example have been purified through recrystallization three times, but we're not really concerned with contaminants. This is a purely practical demonstration. And the source is Hardware Store Root Killer. Found it at Lowe's, like eight bucks for over a pound of it. You can see a really nice time-lapse shot of the copper sulfate crystal dissolving into solution here. This took about 10 minutes in real time, so just sit back and enjoy for a moment. Alright, now it's time to make some copper hydroxide. This is done by first cooling down the copper sulfate solution with some room temperature distilled water and pouring a concentrated ammonia solution into the copper sulfate, slowly. Make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. The ammonia fumes are very choking, and if they accumulate too much, there is a very good chance you'll be having some health issues. You can see the first couple additions, we get a very light blue precipitate, and this is our copper hydroxide. It's fairly insoluble in water, so it crashes out. The more we stir, the more homogeneous everything gets. The very dark blue streaks and splotches we're seeing in the unmixed parts is a complex the ammonia forms with the copper hydroxide. And technically, this is Schweitzer's reagent. In fact, if we keep adding ammonia in excess of the copper hydroxide, we can just form more of it in this step. However, it'll be dilute and probably poor performing, and we can do better. So stir for, for a few minutes so everything is mixed well and wash down the sides of the beaker periodically. I love the colors you get with copper compounds. They're mesmerizing to me. The more we stir, the easier it is to notice we have a liquid carrying about 892 bajillion insoluble nanoparticles. And we need to let those settle out so they can be separated. Turn off stirring and stop touching stuff until a layer forms on the bottom of the beaker. The bottom particles are copper hydroxide, and the liquid layer is water, the dilute Schweitzer's reagent, surely some unreacted copper sulfate, sulfate ions, and who knows what other sorcery. I like how you can watch everything sink down in this shot. Pour off the liquid layer into another beaker, and be careful not to lose any copper hydroxide like me. Wash the beaker sides down, and we're ready to proceed. Dirty the sides of your beaker again by pouring out a little more of the water layer into the waste beaker. Initiate stirring and pour in some concentrated ammonia solution. Put on gloves because you forgot to before, and keep adding the ammonia in doses. Patiently wait while things mix up, and stop when the solution takes on a really pretty dark blue color. 
This bottle of ammonium hydroxide is about uh, five years old. I think I bought off of eBay for like 10 bucks. It still seems fine. Cover the waste beaker with a larger beaker because the fumes are making you wheeze and moving it away would be too obvious a solution. Slowly pour off most of the dark blue solution into a clean beaker and leave the gunk on the bottom of the old beaker. We do this because we haven't dirtied enough glassware yet. Retrieve the stir bar from the old beaker and put it in the new one. We now have our Schweizer's reagent and are ready to dissolve some cellulose. With stirring, add chunks of paper towel, cotton ball or toilet paper, whatever, into the beaker consistently. This is my favorite time lapse footage I've shot to date. I love the contrasting white paper towel with the blue liquid. You'll notice they don't dissolve right away. And at first, we just have a blue solution with chunks of paper bumbling about. But, the more we add, and the more we stir, it becomes clear the paper is indeed dissolving. We eventually reach a point where everything is so viscous, we have to resort to manual stirring. Now you can really watch the cellulose kind of disappear into solution over time. And yes, my arm definitely got tired here. transfer a bit of the goop into a smaller beaker for some reason. Now you can see in slow motion just how thick this liquid is. It's almost behaving like a slime polymer. Uh, this dramatic increase in viscosity is due solely to dissolved cellulose. Think Thanksgiving turkey gravy. The flavorful watery broth is thickened with starchy flour. Except this gravy smells like concentrated cat pee and probably doesn't taste very nice. Cellulose and starches are basically just long chains of glucose molecules, so they behave similarly in certain situations. Stirring in slow motion also shows the solution is pretty much see-through, suggesting we do in fact have cellulose dissolved, and not just tiny pieces of cellulose in suspension. Very cool. Add some water and the smaller beaker off camera, and stir to thin the mixture. Grab another beaker and mix up a dilute acid solution. I'm using hydrochloric acid, but sulfuric or nitric acid can be substituted. What we're going to do is precipitate out the cellulose from solution. So pour the cellulose goop into the acid solution and stir. We're dealing with an ammonia complex here, and since ammonia is basic, if we react that with an, a with an acid solution, the ammonia is neutralized, crashing out the cellulose in the process. I actually add too much of the blue goop at first and use up all the acid, so the solution stays blue. That's okay. The visuals in this reaction are really good indicators of what we need to do. We just need more HCl. So that's added in again to reacidify everything, and we stir. After the second shot of acid, you'll notice the solution turns very light in color, and you can see bits of reformed cellulose that kind of look like wet toilet paper put through a blender. Yeah, I've done that before. Mix up another beaker of acid solution to dirty another beaker, and to obtain slow motion video examples. Fill, or try to fill, man, just pour some of the cellulose mixture into a syringe. We're making paper noodles. The contents of the syringe is shot into the acid mixture and stirred to form some, for lack of a better name, paper noodles. Uh, the rest of the video is just some interesting high speed shots I took during the whole procedure. I just thought this could be a fun reaction to explore, and I'm glad I did. There's something really weirdly satisfying about dissolving paper, not to mention the visuals are very appealing. I might do some further experiments with the products of the reaction and stuff, but mostly I just want to see the reaction done with my own eyes. But I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed carrying everything out. Now it's time to sit back and enjoy some relaxing slow motion shots. Thanks for watching.